I pledge allegiance to the flag of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'm Jenny Armark for the Tea Party Patriots of Jackson County, and I'd like to welcome you all here today. Uh, before we get started, I just want to do one quick announcement. Uh, anybody that's in Jackson County would like to assist Danny Kiever in putting out the candidate signs uh, for the primary uh, runoff, uh, please call him. Ready? 828 506-0040. Danny's got the transportation, the gas, everything. He just needs help with your time. You can ride right with him. 828-506-0040. And he's got a lot of the signs ready to go and to put them out. So um, he'll be needing them between uh, June 28th is the voting at the... Um, what do you call that? Board of Elections. Board of Elections office, Board right. Of and then uh, the um, actual date for the, the runoff is the 17th. But he'll be trying to get out signs down here, I think, now. And then maybe up in Cashers, probably after the 4th. But uh, please call him and sign up and help him get out signs for our candidates. Okay. Now to introduce our speaker. Dr. Dan graduated from Yale School of Medicine cum laude and went on to serve as a commissioned naval officer during the Vietnam era. He is a 35-year practicing physician and successful small business owner. Dr. Dan has authorized 14 peer-reviewed articles, lectured internationally at ophthalmology meetings, and holds six U.S. patents. Dr. Dan Eichenbaum is a formal congressional candidate, grassroots activist, and champion of limited government, personal responsibility, fiscal restraint, individual liberty, and free markets. Dr. Dan is committed to identifying, exposing, and blocking the many tentacles of Agenda 21 wherever they grow, and thus the purpose of today's presentation. Will you all help me welcome Dr. Dan? I want to thank you all for coming out today. I know everyone here would probably rather be outside. I certainly would too. Unfortunately, what we're going to be talking about today is so important that being inside today to try to stop this will allow us all to be outside and to enjoy the outdoors, uh, which some people would like us not to be able to do. Uh, so I want to thank Jenny and I want to thank you all for coming. And I'm going to hope that the electronics work the way they should. I think they will. My name is Dr. Dan Eichenbaum. We are living in perilous times, but many of us really don't understand the nature of the risks facing us as individuals and as a nation. True individual freedom is under attack by forces far more powerful and far more resourceful than ever before. If you think freedom is not important, ask anyone who has experienced life as a slave or a person who once enjoyed freedom and had it taken away. Freedom is not a partisan issue to be debated by politicians and used to purchase votes. It is a basic moral right of humanity. Freedom is the absence of coercion, an absolute whose definition does not change based on your personal worldview. Most of you believe that as American citizens, you're still free. 
protected by our Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Nothing could be further from reality, and I will prove that to you. Compared to what was originally ours when the Constitution was written, all we have left is the illusion of freedom, a few scraps of liberty not yet stolen by those who seek control over every aspect of our lives. That, unfortunately, is the truth. It has happened so slowly over so many years that you have barely noticed. It is far easier to ignore painful reality than to confront it. And that is exactly what most of us have been doing for far too long. Most of our fellow citizens are either uninformed, disinterested, or deceived by the false promises of a collectivist future. My mission in this presentation is to explain in a clear and concise manner the direct effect of each issue on the individual, on you personally, not some anonymous person, third person in a distant place, and to define in no uncertain terms the consequences of inaction. To begin, I need to discuss one concept that is of overriding importance. The right to own private property that cannot be arbitrarily confiscated by the government is the moral and constitutional source of our freedom. Our founders, especially Thomas Jefferson, understood that a person's property consisted not only of his land and his home, but the work of his hands, the inventions of his brain, and ultimately life itself. And our Constitution specifically protects and secures property rights along with companion rights that our founders considered to be natural law rights. In fact, the source document for natural law rights is the Ten Commandments, which contains prohibitions against envy, theft, bearing false witness, and murder, all of which directly relate to an individual's right to possess and maintain what was considered private property by our founders. Understanding the principle that natural law rights are individual rights, not collective rights, is critical to appreciating why natural law rights are the basis for personal freedom. Our founders considered natural law rights to be God-given. That is, they belong to you by dint of your humanity. The difference between natural law rights, which are divine in origin, and a right granted by government or by man is simply this. Natural law rights impose no obligation on any other person. You have the right to pursue happiness, but you do not have the right to obligate me to provide happiness for you. You can work to earn money for food, clothing, and shelter, but you have no right to obligate me to provide those things for you if you're an inadequate provider or if you can't earn enough to live in the lifestyle that you would like to live in. You may ask for charity from your friends, neighbors, and fellow citizens, but you may not require them to agree to your requests. As evidenced by historical experience, all too painfully, rights that are granted by government or by man can be modified, augmented, or eliminated at any time by the very authority that granted them in the first place. From the dawn of human civilization, groups of men have sought to rule over others. The result is always the same, a struggle to prevent tyrants from eliminating individual freedom. Right now, the front line in that battle is the United Nations Agenda 21. Agenda 21, with its concept of sustainable development, formally began at the UN's Conference of Rio in 1992. But if you read the UN Charter, it was there all along from the very beginning. 
To save Mother Earth from a promised environmental catastrophe, sustainable development severely restricts the use of all of Earth's resources by human beings in a system they call biodiversity, in which all living and non-living components of our planet's ecosystem are of equal value. It is a goal that is meant to sound noble and impossible to oppose. But in spite of the flowery language and the lofty promises of a better tomorrow, it is a sadistic hoax. The true intention of the proponents of Agenda 21 is to create a socialist, redistributive, one-world government run by self-appointed elitists, shielded by the banner of the United Nations. Suppose in today's world, you wanted to be the supreme ruler of mankind, the lord of the earth. What aspects of human society would you need to control? Private property, energy, food and water, information and the media, education of the youth, individual privacy, health care, personal mobility, and the use of deadly force. The UN's Agenda 21 seeks total control on a global scale over all of these nine items. A direct attack on private property rights was the very first UN initiative after the Conference of Rio in 1992. In September of 1994, proponents of Agenda 21 introduced the UN Biodiversity Treaty into the US Senate. This treaty proclaimed that human life was of no greater value than animal or plant life. Further, it set aside over 50% of the US mainland for human-free zones and buffer zones with limited human activity, leaving only tiny isolated islands of land, they're pale green on this map, which are called human occupation zones. If you think this has nothing to do with Western North Carolina, you're sadly mistaken. This beautiful mountain region that we call home has been designated a human free zone. And there you can see Western North Carolina. Everything in red is human free. The yellow is buffer. So according to the UN, we will not be living here if Agenda 21 comes to fruition. Fortunately, Kay Bailey Hutchinson prevented ratification of this treaty by showing this very wildlands map on the Senate floor. But unfortunately, most of this treaty's provisions are already being enacted right behind our backs by presidential executive orders and regulations at the state and local level. Using environmental acts and regulations such as the Endangered Species Act, Clean Air and Clean Water Acts, the federal government already owns over 40% of the land in the US. Most of that's out west. <clears throat> but nevertheless, if you read your constitution, you know the federal government is supposed to own 10 square miles in Washington, DC, post roads and post offices. This is a far cry for that and it is totally unconstitutional. <coughs> so, when the government wants to use the Endangered Species Act to steal your property, this is how they do it. First of all, a species is designated as endangered and its habitat is identified. The habitat is then surrounded by a buffer zone. Then privately owned land in and around the habitat and buffer zone is confiscated and its use by humans restricted so that animals or plants are allowed to th thrive. Property owners are forced off their land by onerous uses regulations, excessive taxation, arbitrary zoning laws, eminent domain abuse, and if all else fails, outright condemnation. The Central Valley region in California is one of the most fertile and productive farmlands in the US. Pumps bringing essential irrigation for crops in that reason, region have been turned off by court order to protect the small men, the Delta smelt. 
Oil production in western Texas is now threatened by attempts to declare the sand dune lizard an endangered species. Here's how they went about it. Environmentalists decided where the habitat of this lizard ought to be. So then they went out to these supposed habitats and they watched for one hour. They did not see any lizards. They therefore came back and said, this lizard must be endangered because we didn't see any. So a two inch long fish could turn the Central Valley into a dust bowl and a three inch long lizard could hold oil production in one of the most fertile oil grounds in our country, West Texas. And all of this is thanks to the Endangered Species Act. The ultimate goal of Agenda 21 is to eliminate all private property rights using eminent domain abuse, forced annexation, and condemnation. If, however, outright confiscation of your land is not immediately practical, their tactic is to limit your ability to use and enjoy your land for any worthwhile purpose. This can be accomplished by zoning ordinances with arbitrary land use restrictions, overly restrictive building permits, oppressive zoning laws, unconstitutional search and seizure to execute laws that are fabricated or otherwise unenforceable. I call this theft by regulation. Suppose I were to give you a car as a gift. After you have the keys and the title in your hand, I tell you there are a few rules. First of all, you can only drive the car in North Carolina, and I'm going to retain a set of keys so that I can use the car anytime I want if I need it. Although you hold the title to that vehicle in your hand with that car, really be yours. One of the most egregious examples of theft by regulation is occurring in Antelope Valley, California, where Los Angeles County is requiring current landowners, many of whom have lived there for decades, to bring their dwellings up to current building codes or be prohibited from living on their own land. If these landowners cannot inhabit their own homes on lands they legally own, has the government not stolen their land from them? Theft by regulation is occurring right here in western North Carolina. And stream setbacks are an <coughs> example of how this is occurring. Environmentalists consider a stream setback to be land on each side of a stream that must be left totally wild, natural, and untended. It's called a riparian zone. The water in the stream is also off limits for human use. By definition, a stream does not need to run continuously, just contain running water at any time during the year. The primary non-governmental organization called an NGO in our state is the North Carolina Council of Governments, the NCCOG. In Western North Carolina, we are in Section A of the NCCOG, also called the Southwestern Commission, <coughs> whose offices happen to be right here in Silva. One of the subsidiaries of the Southwestern Commission is the Mountain Landscapes Initiative. Ben Brown, the head of the Mountain Landscapes Initiative's communications team, wrote an article in USA Today in which he described his vision <coughs> for the ideal community. As part of the new urbanism that uh, he espouses, he states, quote, there is an appropriate human habitat, just as there is an appropriate habitat for all other life forms. Residents should be able to satisfy basic retail, food, and entertainment needs within a few minutes' walk from their homes. Maybe lots of folks have been wrong about freedom being the central organizing principle of civilization. Boo! <laughs> That's Ben Brown and the Southwest Commission, and they intend to define for us what is the appropriate human habitat. That's what they are intending to do, and they plan to force us to live in that habitat because folks have been wrong about the importance of freedom. These people believe themselves to be so smart 
and know so much that we should all be grateful for the opportunity to allow them to tell us all what to do. They are saying that our individual freedom and property rights have to be sacrificed to satisfy their socialist worldview. Now here is how the NGOs creep into local governments. First, they help the county government by facilitating simple projects that the bureaucrats should be doing as part of their job. After ingratiating themselves with the county hierarchy, they create a comprehensive land use plan filled with environmental restrictions. They present it to the county commission saying, here's a finished plan, all you gotta do is adapt it. If the commissioners refuse, they threaten the county with loss of state funding or road projects or other different things that the state supposedly will do. In the year 2000, the Southwestern Commission proposed a plan with stream setbacks of 100 feet on each side in Macon County, which was fortunately defeated. Their next proposal was setbacks of 50 feet, which was also defeated. Consider a farmer whose farmland contains natural springs and streams. One Macon County farmer with a 64-acre farm calculated that with 50-foot setbacks, he would be left with seven acres of usable land. The Southwestern Commission and their subsidiary, the Mountain Landscapes Initiative, have already held planning meetings in our region and are well on their way to advancing the UN's Agenda 21 at the local level. To ensure that there's no opposition at the local planning level, they use what's called the technique. They identify in advance people who are sympathetic to their goals and see the audience with them. They ask for suggestions from the audience, polling primarily their friendly citizens, and then claim, this is what the people want. Here is an example, directly from the Region A toolbox, of a report from the Mountain Landscapes Initiative. And I'll quote, local folks are begging our elected officials to enact rules that will more strictly govern subdivision roads, junkyards, sightseeing helicopters, and sediment runoff. Our citizens are calling on our leaders to stem the conversion to development of our few remaining large tracts of land that are in private hands. Do you think that's really true? Are people coming up to any of you in the street saying, I want the government to make more rules? We need more regulations, more land use restrictions. We want the government to tell us how to manage our lives. I don't think so. The citizens of Western North Carolina want government to butt out and leave them alone. They don't want restrictions on land use. They don't want stream setbacks. And they definitely don't want zoning restrictions, zoning regulations. Here, is the, here are the Southwestern Commission plans for Jackson County, taken directly from the Region A toolbox. The areas in green are already protected or on their way to being protected from human activity. It is apparent that there is very little land in Jackson County available for use by human beings. This map clearly shows their success in stealing our land. And remember that every stolen inch represents lost freedom. Reed Noss, the co-author of the Wildlands Project, clearly states its goals. The collective needs of non-human species must take precedence over the needs and desires of humans. On the very first Earth Day in 1978, the scientific elite warned us that global cooling and a new ice age was upon us. When the Earth's climate did not cooperate, their new crisis was global warming. Initially, their data clearly blamed carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels. Later, it was revealed that the results were deliberately falsified to prove the politically correct agenda. Energy is essential for commerce and the maintenance of our human lifestyle. All life and energy processes on Earth are based on the carbon molecule. Animals take in car oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. 
The oceans are an enormous balancing effect for carbon dioxide as well. And all living organisms use carbon-based molecules in their food for energy production. Regulations that disregard that simple fact, such as designating carbon dioxide as a poison, are primarily designed to decrease the energy that is available for transportation and industrial growth, and ultimately to restrict human activity. Rising energy costs with eventual shortages and rationing of fuel will adversely affect every aspect of human life. Food, mobility, healthcare, recreation, and individual freedom. Now all of those, of course, are the goals of Agenda 21. Using every, every agency at its disposal, the federal government is taking control of the production and consumption of food. Their tool is burdensome regulations and that favor the large commercial foreign conglomerates like Monsanto. Small local farmers and family farms cannot afford the staff necessary to comply. More often than not, the rules serve no real purpose other than justifying the bureaucrats' jobs. Now this is the essence of the public-private partnership that's part of Agenda 21. Government writes rules that favor big corporations who then return the favor by supporting big government programs and profiting from them. The FDA and other agencies make rules for food content, restaurant menus, and homemade school lunches, all to control the type and the amount of food available for human consumption. Every di dictator from the beginning of time understands that indoctrination of children through government schools is insurance against future rebellion. The Hitler Jungen of the 1930s is a good example of how well that works. In addition, dumbing down students creates a compliant population of adults who are then easily manipulated by government propaganda issued by their lackeys in the controlled media. Like the Hitler Jung and our youngsters are being taught to parrot the slogans of one world government, environmental extremism, and the promised collective utopia. Our students are no longer being taught American history and the moral basis for our constitutional republic, nor are they being given the tools necessary to compete in the future world economy. During colonial times, the British governors could arrest and detain indefinitely anyone speaking ill of King George. Habeas corpus was non-existent. British soldiers could also occupy a person's home or demand search and seizure of the home by writing out a warrant on the spot without prior judicial authorization. The Bill of Rights was written to protect us as individuals from abuses of executive power such as those suffered by the colonists at the hands of King George and the colonial authorities. In our time, we have seen an unprecedented attack on privacy through RICO, the Patriot Act, the Warner Act, the NDAA, the Expatriation Act, and most recently, the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order, which was signed on a Friday night in March which gives the federal government authority to constrict all persons of critical experience without pay and to nationalize all productive capacity and resources within the United States for distribution domestically and abroad. <clears throat> that gives the government the power to take anything it wants from anything anyone it wants for any reason that it invents. Red light cameras, Video surveillance in public places, full body scanners at the airport, Google Street View, electronic medical records which the government can access, and the recently added specter of unmanned drones with attack capabilities represent a gross usurpation of power by the government that is blatantly unconstitutional. Unbridled police power is the hallmark of a totalitarian state. 
Guns in the hands of individuals present the greatest single threat to tyrants, and they know it. Restriction of private gun ownership is of prime importance to the proponents of Agenda 21. The UN has made multiple attempts to pass international gun control treaties, a concept that is publicly supported by Hillary Clinton, our Secretary of State. Now, in theory, any treaty, even if ratified by the Senate, cannot restrict or eliminate a right guaranteed to us by the Constitution. Nevertheless, such a treaty, if ratified by the Senate, would encourage gun control advocates to renew attempts to legislate gun restrictions. And the resulting lit litigation could give activist federal judges another opportunity to destroy our Second Amendment protections. It is my belief and fear that the private ownership of guns and proficiency in their use may eventually be our only salvation. The Agenda 21 plan is to herd us citizens into tax-subsidized, government-controlled, mixed-use development called human settlements, where public services such as health care, drinking water, food, and energy resources will be rationed and freedom of mobility will be heavily restricted. For example, the Smart Growth Plan for Richland County, South Carolina, distinguishes between employment-based villages and non-employment-based villages and special gated communities set aside for the wealthy individuals responsible for the overall plan. The proponents of Agenda 21 are also clear about their intentions to reduce Earth's population to their ideal number, about 500 million humans. That means about six billion of us will just have to go. And unfortunately, that is exactly what will happen because the smart mega cities they envision will have a high population density, restricted mobility, and rationing of essential services such as food, water, and health care. As a result of these living conditions, the human population will quickly be decimated by starvation, violence, and disease. Welcome to George Orwell's 1984. He only missed a date by about 28 years. We have an executive branch that is ruling by decree. A, cap a cabal of bureaucrats that are issuing regulations at a fever clip. An electronic invasion of privacy that ignores all constitutionality. <coughs> a media that spews the biased rhetoric of the ruling elite. Endless wars and constant crisis increasing control over every aspect of human endeavor. And even worse, we have a Congress that is filled with political hacks who lack the courage to demand an end to this unconstitutional tyranny of the global elite. Above it all is Agenda 21, the puppet masters of Earth using the United Nations to establish a one world order to rule and enslave humanity. Agenda 21, therefore, is the single greatest threat to our individual freedom. Now, our constitutional republic, as it was originally conceived, gave ultimate power to a moral and honest citizenry. Federal authority was strictly limited to the powers enumerated in Article I, Section 8, and the rights of states and the people were protected by the Ninth and Tenth Amendments in the Bill of Rights. Agenda 21 turns all of this upside down to the detriment of our national sovereignty and to our personal freedom. Now, we have heard these arguments before, always from the mouths of those who claim to act for the benefit of mankind out of selfless disregard for their own well-being. They say it's for your own good, or it's for the good of all. They are so smart and they know so much that they believe we should all be grateful for the opportunity to allow them to control our lives. Meanwhile, they intend to be personally exempt from any such plan. Their do as I say, not as I do mentality and attitude characterizes the elitist ideology. After all, socialism is for the people, not the socialists. 
The power elite know that the goals of Agenda 21 are unconstitutional, destructive to the Judeo-Christian principles on which our country was founded, and contrary to the basic instincts of most Americans. Most Americans know that this is just not right. To captivate the uninformed, therefore, they must conceal their plans behind words and concepts that sound beneficial for all and worthy of immediate acceptance. Their primary subterfuge is the term sustainable development. Most of us understand that clean air and clean water are desirable. We understand that throwing trash out the window of a moving vehicle is unacceptable behavior. By sustainable development, however, they plan to use onerous and fraudulent environmental regulations to redistribute our national wealth internationally, steal our national sovereignty and individual freedom, and confiscate private property through abusive environmental regulation. Here are some of the additional concepts they use to achieve their goals. Things are a dire threat. The crisis is always a dire threat to public safety, to the environment, to our health, or our national security. It's urgent. The action must be taken before it's too late. We must bypass the usual legislative processes because they're too cumbersome and too slow. Smart growth is economic activity that is tightly controlled by the government, by its laws and rules and regulations, instead of allowing economic success and failure to be determined by the free market principles that made our nation the most prosperous on earth in the first place. A government guarantee of equal outcomes instead of equal opportunity demeans and undermines the well-being of those who have achieved success through self-reliance and independent action. Now, <clears throat> if I had given this presentation five years ago, someone would have run out and put a tinfoil hat on my head. Now, anyone paying attention understands that Agenda 21 is all too real. Because of our decades of inaction, it is easy to become disheartened by the odds of success that seem impossible. Agenda 21 is like a cancer. It is everywhere. Many names. It is appearing in counties, in cities, federally, in states, under many different names. It is a cancer, and we are certainly at stage four. But remember this one fact. The UN Biodiversity Treaty was almost assured of being ratified until one brave senator, K. Bailey Hutchinson, single-handedly prevented its passage. When the stark choice of slavery or freedom presented itself to Patrick Henry, his proclamation, give me liberty or give me death, served as the rallying cry for American patriots. Our founders answered that cry by being willing to risk life, liberty, and property for freedom. At this decisive crossroad in our nation's history, on these matters of principle, compromise is absolutely 100% no longer an option. As a patriot, for me personally, my choice is crystal clear. And so I ask you, and I ask each of you, what are you willing to sacrifice for freedom? How you answer that question will determine the future of this nation. Thank you very much.
organization that is called uh, Haywood Waterways. I don't know if you have it around here, but they use all those keywords and they use all those techniques. And if you look at their website and read between the lines, they are it in our county. They have recently proposed, or, or they are supporting the mapping of Haywood County for debris areas. I sent you an email on this and hope maybe you could begin to look into it. Um, and uh, the, again, like our county commissioners agreed to house the mappings once these, these surveys are done. And in essence, they gave them an acceptance level there, which allowed them to go out and get grants from who knows where to do this mapping of our county. Uh, what, what, have you looked into that at all? Or are you aware of Haywood Waterways? Haywood Waterways is just one of the other of multiple groups that are all part of these non-governmental organizations that have <coughs> sprung up everywhere. They all, no matter what their name, their purpose is always the same. They come to the commission, they come to the county, and they say, we want to do you a service. We want to do you a good turn, OK? To me, uh, this, is all, this is all like like a pervert sitting in a car with candy, waiting for a kid to come by. The kid comes by, and they hold out the candy just to get the kid in the car. Once the kid is in the car, they can have their way. We are now fighting this very same thing in uh, Cherokee County. And I have had two very cantankerous, angry, <coughs> unfortunately, and unnecessarily so meetings with our county commission. Uh, <clears throat> the Southwestern Commission and the Mountain Landscapes Initiative have prepared a toolbox, a, a Region A toolbox, which is their plan for Region A, which is our seven county area where we are right now. The book is this thing. As a matter of fact, I have a copy of it with me. Does it include Haywood County? Yeah. Haywood okay. County is part of the Region A. It's Cherokee, Clay, Graham, Jackson, Swain, Macon, and Haywood. That's Region A. Uh, and so what, the, what, what they did is they came to Cherokee County and they do some good things. So this is, this is what it appears to the county. And I'm going to take a few minutes to explain this, Hubert. Relax. Okay, relax, relax, okay, I got it, but you can come. I know he's chomping at the bit. Anyway, uh, so what they did is they provide uh, money for a senior center, for some transportation for seniors, Meals on Wheels, and Habitat for Humanity Homes. Now, the commission and some people in Cherokee County think that the Southwestern Commission is giving them the money. But they're not. They're a facilitator. They're a middleman. All they do is go and they facilitate the transfer of funds from where they are to the county. But the county commission says they must be good people because look what they're doing for us. In fact, Cherokee County has someone that they hired who's on the payroll who's supposed to be doing that himself. But he's not because he doesn't have to. So then when the Southwestern Commission and the Mountain Landscapes Initiative come in and they have these meetings, these meetings with concerned citizens, and I don't know where they get them from. They put some small notice this big in the newspaper. And then they come up with a comprehensive land use plan for Cherokee County, which involves things that are outright stupid for Cherokee County, things that we would never, as citizens, want, and things that involve taking land from people, just taking land from people, okay, stealing it. So then the commission says, well, they were right on this. We must go ahead and adopt the toolbox. So I gave the commissioners a presentation, an abbreviated presentation on Agenda 21 and the local effects of Agenda 21. Had to go. <laughs> they listened to me, okay? Um, I spoke to the commissioners privately afterward, called by phone. One of them came and stood in my driveway for an hour in front of my barn, and we talked. And here's a guy who is 
He hates zoning. He would never vote for zoning. He thinks people should be free to use their water, their land, and all that stuff. And yet, he is in favor of uh, all the good things that the Southwestern Commission does. In addition to which, he sits on the board of one of their commissions. Duh. I talked to one of the other commissioners, and his response, I, he happened not to be at that presentation, okay, because his daughter was about to give birth. So uh, I called him up and I discussed it with him, and he said, uh, send me some stuff on it. So I sent him a little few stuff on it. He has a person who I know very well who's his political and philosophical confidant. So I sent a bunch of stuff to her. About three or four days later, I called him up. He says, I read your stuff. He said, this stuff is just pure communism out and out. I'm voting against it. He's a Democrat. Okay, the other two are Republicans. So then they had their budget meeting and what we're trying to do is get them to defund the Southwestern Commission, that the, the money that they pay uh, every year in the amount of 18,000 bucks. I don't want them to, and most of our other people do not either. So we again packed the room. And this is, I have to say, our 912 group in Cherokee County is absolute gem. The first presentation, we had over 100 people in the room. At the budget meeting, we have again over 100 people in the room, standing room only. Okay? What I did at the second meeting was this. Okay? Uh, I had a supporter from way off who happens to be sitting in the back of the room, and I will acknowledge the fact that he believes in freedom enough to come and support us at the county meeting, and I was very grateful for that. And you can thank him for it yourselves after the meeting. The second thing I did is I took their toolbox, and I went through it, and I gave them about somewhere over a dozen examples in the words of the Mountain Landscape Initiative, point by point, I said, they, on page 34, they say this. On page 37, they say this. And what I did is I took, I made a case, like a lawyer would make a case. And I showed them how this plan, this toolbox plan, would be stealing land through zoning, land use restrictions, setbacks, regulations on the color Place, color of roofs, color of homes, placement of homes, on the, and where you could cut trees, where you could, everything was in, is in this book, okay? And I did it point by point by point. Now, the, chair, the chairman of the, the chairwoman of the commission was very upset about that. And she said in public that she'd had just about enough of me. <laughs> Unfortunately for her, she hasn't seen the last of me, and she hasn't seen the last of the 912, because we are now going to appear at every single commission meeting. I don't care when they are, they can hold them at midnight. And the rule in Cherokee County, by the way, and probably the rule in most other counties, is if a majority of the commission is meeting together, in any way, it is a public meeting. They cannot keep you out. So you go and you watch. So at the moment, probably they're going, to ref they're going to fund the Southwestern Commission again this year. So we will have to live with that, but that does not mean that we will go away. And we will start turning up at every single meeting mm -hmm. that we can. We will write letters to the editor, and we will be otherwise present as much as humanly possible whenever these decisions are made. Now, it turns out in Cherokee County, we are having an election in November for two additional commissioners. So in, from three, it will go to five. And by the way, at that commission meeting, during that whole thing where I outlined that in case, that one Democrat on the board, he was fuming. He said, no one's taken my land. No one's taken your land. I'm against this. He made a motion to defund the Southwestern Commission. The other two commissioners, neither of them would second the motion. They're up for election in two years. Well, let's get rid of them. Right. Let's but we have a chance now in November to put two additional voices on the commission 
that may well be more favorable to the freedom, to property rights, and we're hoping that we can affect that. Did you have a question? Is it a question? Yes. Yeah. Can I, I can comment directly on that if you wish. She, she had to go to court by herself. She couldn't afford it the other way she wanted. I'm very well aware of that situation. I'm not going to name them right at the moment. However, he was also at the first meeting, uh, and he has a very valid claim, <clears throat> as do very many other people who have spoken to me subsequently, that one of the, one of the villains here is the Forest Service. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And it's a, it's a villain because because what they do is blatantly illegal uh, by the, they have, and we, they have, and I have seen documentation uh, and been told about documentation, I should say, where they have gone and changed deeds. They come in every year and they relocate their property lines further onto your land. Uh, this has been going on for decades. Uh, some, uh, one of the, uh, county uh, officials in Cherokee County came up to me after the presentation and said to me, uh, <clears throat> told me about instances where his grandfather and his father had all had land stolen from them by the Forest Service. And he said, he said, I'm from Swain County. He said, it's amazing there's any land left in Swain County. Every year, he said, they take another 50 feet and they've been doing it for 50 years. Well, so, we have right? absolutely, and, and this is this is egregiously unconstitutional, illegal. It is out and out theft, and unless we stand up, unless we stand up to it, yeah. Well, I, you know, those people that you're talking about have lost a lot of land. They have not been compensated. They have tried to fight it, but it takes money to fight these things. Now, the people I'm mentioning live with their land together, so mothers. Oh, I know about that one, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about, in the movie you mentioned, um, the executive order that was signed on Friday night, Right. Is that the peacetime martial law? That is the, the uh, National Resource Preparedness Act in which it allows the executive branch <coughs> to uh, conscript people without pay, to take, uh, to o take over the, all the means of production, to redistribute the, uh, what we have around the country and abroad, uh, basically, like I said, to take anything from anyone they want for whatever reason they invent. That was signed on March 16th. I, I can't keep all those numbers in my mind, but that's the name of it. <clears throat> March 16th was the date it was signed on a Friday evening. But that would not be called peacetime martial law. No, I don't believe that's the same thing. That's something else. Yes, sir. Dr. Dan, the problem I, as I see it, for those of us who love liberty, love freedom, and are staunch property rights advocates, how do we undo 20 years of work brainwashing? For example, mm -hmm. smart growth. So what do you want? Stupid growth? <laughs> so they, they use that, and we've had 20 years of indoctrination through the media, in the schools, that, I mean, let's be frank, all the areas are good, people are bad. How do we undo 20 years worth of that VR? To say that liberty is important, freedom is important, private property rights are important. In your opinion, what's the best way to counter that? We have to undertake a massive campaign of educating people right. to what's happening, to what's going on. Um, you sent me, Jenny, an article of, about, you know, right now, Rio Plus 20 is going on right now this week. You know that. And there was an article that came out that Jenny sent me a link to, and I read it last night, in which there are people 
at that conference, members of the conference who are standing up to this entire process. And they are saying there at that summit that number one, the whole global, global warming climate change is a bunch of hogwash, which we all know it is, and that a socialist takeover of the world is not going to feed people who are now hungry. And they are pushing for a free market solutions in the world rather than socialist solutions in the world. I think that a lot of people are waking up to what is going on, and uh, we just have to keep up the pressure by groups like this. Now, <clears throat> we're basically speaking to the choir here for the most part. No one has taken any pot shots at me, and I haven't seen any darts, arrows, or bullets flying over my head. So I can assume that almost everyone in here is pretty much on board. The problem is, is that we need to go out from here and corral people wherever we can to try to educate them. The key to me is to try to get people to understand, and it's not hard in Western North Carolina, it's not hard to get people to understand property rights. People here have had living on family land for two, three, and four generations understand what property is all about. And so you must get to them and say, look, property is important to you. Do you want it taken away? Here is how it's going to be taken away. If you have a stream on your property and your cows can't get to that stream, then you don't have that stream and you don't have that land. I'll give you an example over in Clay County in Tusquiddy. Uh, I, was at, I gave a speech like this at the GOP meeting in Clay County. There was a woman there who lives in Tusquiddy on Tusquiddy Creek. And she told me that the setbacks there are 500 feet. And she further told me that some of her neighbors were out doing a little grass mowing and cutting down some trees and the Forest Service came onto her land and said, you stop immediately or we are going to fine you severely for touching our land. If that doesn't bring it home, I don't know what will. Yes, ma'am. Just say, you know, all, of this, see, all that. of this, all of this is very scary. And the point is, like I said in the beginning, this is like stage four cancer. It's growing everywhere. Our country is infected. Okay. Now, what are our tools? Our tools are showing up. And in terms of states, I firmly, I'm a firm believer in nullification. We have got to get our state legislatures to stand up for us. We're the citizens of North Carolina, okay? Our state needs to protect us from outside influences. We are not getting a lot of help from that by anybody in Raleigh. And the only way we're gonna get any help is if we camp on their doorsteps and kick them in the shins. Uh, two days ago, Two days ago, um, Raleigh passed Senate Bill 491. Glenn Bradley, who is our champion in Raleigh, tried to get the Sustainable Local Food Advisory Council and all this garbage stuff in here out, and they didn't do it, all right? And I want to tell you, just you know, for those of you that think if you want to vote for somebody with an R after their name and it's going to happen, it doesn't happen. Apodaca, Tim Moffitt, Chuck McGrady, Trudy Whalen, Patsy Kiever, who is a Democrat, the rest of them are Republicans, and um, all voted yes, including Martin Nesbitt, all right? And the only one who voted no on this was Glenn Bradley. 
Only way we're going to get rid of this, folks, is we have to get the right people in office, which means they've got to be vetted, and you've got to hold their feet to the fire. And so there should be an enormous uproar over this because now they have given some more money to this, and it's all coming down on us. So it's Senate Bill 491. It was ratified two days ago. I'll have it in the newsletter. I have a question regarding the EPA, our wonderful EPA. Um, you know, currently I just saw something put on the news the other day about the biocellulose fuels and mandating that a certain percentage of that be uh, blended into our uh, gasoline, otherwise it would be fine. However, there is no such animal, yet they're getting fined. How much of this, when that started, uh, was pure fantasy, naivety, or how much do you think Agenda 21 is so ingrained into like the EPA's actions today as far as legislation? You know, um, it's interesting to, to have a question like that because a lot of these NGOs just flat out deny that they're part of Agenda 21. Um, after our appearances in the <coughs> at, in Cherokee County, uh, the paper, the Cherokee Scout, called the Southwestern Commission to get comments, and they said their comment was, uh, "We're not part of Agenda 21, and I really know absolutely nothing about it," which was in the paper. Liar. Well. Liar, liar, pants on fire, you know. I mean, what are you, you going to do? So when I had a presentation the second time, where I took the toolbox, okay, the first part of that presentation, about 10 minutes, I took statements from the toolbox that directly mirrored and copied mm -hmm. statements from Agenda 21 on the UN website. So I said, look, I mean, it's in the UN website, the same words are in your toolbox. There is no way you can tell me that you don't know about this, that you're not part of it, no matter what you say. The bottom line is they can say whatever they want. It really doesn't matter if they are taking the actions, and that's what this is. So a lot of these NGOs are doing as most they possibly can. It may not be directly from the UN directives, but it's all part of the same concept that is, and one of the slides I didn't show, Karl Marx was asked, what is the one thing that has to happen for communism or socialism to succeed on a worldwide basis? And he said, there must be the absolute elimination of private property. And that is the first number one plank in the Communist Manifesto. So you know how important this is to people who desire socialism or fascism, uh, whichever you want to call it. Um, you were talking about, uh, you were asking about solutions on how to go from here forward, how to make a difference. And um, another lady over here was talking about the presidential executive work, which you mentioned, which you, you know, we feel here in the Western North Carolina, we can't really change the executive work. And then your approach is down here at the local level, you know, to to attack it at the county commission level, which is a whole lot easier to grasp than to change an executive order. And also our North Carolina legislature has been brought up by several people, and we have an order, a, a law, very similar to the executive order that was just passed as called the North Carolina Emergency Management Act, which has very similar wording to what you quoted uh, from the president. We're, we passed it, we passed it with a very aggressive legislature, but it's very difficult to nullify or pull back or repeal legislation once it's in place. We don't have a very strong mechanism for it. And I don't know how to, you know, if, the, if you're fighting it, hopefully before it happens. Johnny mentioned Haley County. We just passed a huge war on management act that, could, that really restricted the property rights along the creek. So when you're talking about this, this just happened last month, six weeks ago, when we had to just pass it. Now that it's passed, it's like our window of opportunity is gone because it's in place. And I don't know how to get, I mean, even when you get good people elected, they don't want to repeal things. It's, it's like indoctrinated in them. When they get there, oh, we'll tweak it and change this word. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you're not putting good people in. You're not putting That's in. really, I think what, what Fremont said good. is such a key issue. Uh, they're involved in, in getting people elected who are handing out stuff to people, okay? And they're also involved in legal action. They're suing, <coughs> they're filing suits. And I kind of looked at that and I said, <clears throat> I think it's one of the drones. <laughs> anyway, I, what I'm saying is, I'm, these, are, these are the tactics they're using. And I'm trying to figure out, for me, how, how do we counter? How do we counter that? I'll tell you one of the things that, that I did that, I, that I'm going to do, and I, uh, I'm, I'm hoping this works, okay? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I formed a 501c3 corporation called the Trust and Freedom Foundation. Um, I'm gonna solicit money and see how much I can get. And one of the things that that foundation will do will be to initiate legal action. If we get enough money and I can hire a constitutional lawyer, part-time or full-time or on a, on a contract basis, to start filing suits. I mean, that's what they're doing. <coughs> they see a cross over here, so they file a suit over there. But they, they, uh, the, our nation is suit happy. I don't know if you heard yesterday, some woman got, was at a Little League baseball game and got hit in the face with a ball, and she's suing the 11-year-old who threw it. I mean, you know, God help us all. But the point is, they're using the legal profession <coughs> To, to further their aims. I mean, that's how they've gotten, uh, you know, obscenity. That's how they've gotten all, anything you name, they have sued for. Mm -hmm. We got to start suing that. Mm -hmm. And just, just the more suits you can file, the better off you're going to do, because that makes people take notice, because it takes money out of people's pockets. Mm -hmm. In terms of education, I was thinking, what could we possibly do? One of the things we could do is monitor what goes on in classrooms. Wouldn't it be nice if parents would volunteer to sit in their kid's classroom or sit in any kid's classroom? They'd have a heart attack. Yeah. That's right. They would have a heart attack. <coughs> but isn't that, isn't that what you really need is to have yes. someone whose objective sitting in the back of the room saying, boy, she shouldn't have said that. What's going on here? What's going on here? And in fact, just the presence of someone in that classroom would probably make things go a little bit straighter than they're going now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they have a head start on us by decades and decades. But that doesn't mean, like I showed with K. Bailey Hutchinson, one person made a huge amount of difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, stand up. Tell us all. Did you say writing? Writing. Writing. Yeah. So I took an AP English class this year. Um, so when I was studying for my exam, you, you learn rhetorical devices, and one of them, so I was going over the definitions for the test, and one of them was declare a sentence, which means a statement, and it gives an example of the sentence. Um, and the sentence was, Alternate forms of energy can only be sought by people who are not capitalists searching for only money and power. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I brought up in class and I was like, so, Miss Henning, what do you mean by this? And she said, oh, oh, it's just the AP board. I don't have anything to do with it. So, wow. Yeah. Good you noticed that. That's yeah. great. Can I say yes. something? Uh, yeah, I'm going to interrupt just for a moment because we did say this would go to noon. Oh, um, obviously, anybody that wants to stay, how long are you willing to I'm answer here. questions to? And can I just make one thing? I just passed around a, a sign-up board for a newsletter. Please sign up, put your email down. We will keep you informed of things. Right. So please uh, make sure I get those boards. Yeah, back. clipboard going around. And uh, this will be for people to learn all about how to go to 
county commissioners meetings and so forth. Speaking of county commissioners or candidate for county commissioner and other candidates in the room, I just want to do a quick recognition. Marty Jones, candidate for Jackson County Commissioner is here. Mark Meadows, U.S. House, here. Ken Gardner, Secretary of State. And we'll continue this and then if anybody wants to, we can go as long as you, you want. So. I'm fine. Does, do you want to say something, Hubert? No, I do. The, her question in the email was forwarded to me for research, and I have the names right here in my hand, so you see you right after class. Thank you. DVD. Oh, are they like waterways? Yeah, you know there are people that belong to that as volunteers, and they have no idea what it's all about. Exactly. There is, there is ignorant as dirt, dumb as dirt. I have the names of the people that belong to this other day. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's one of the things. It's like I said. They make it sound so appealing. Oh, yeah. How can you be against clean water? Yeah. It has nothing to do with that. We have, we have a county commissioner in Haywood County, and I was sitting in the commissioner's meeting when this happened, and it had to do with the mapping, debris mapping of the Haywood waterways. They made their presentation, mm -hmm. beautiful, this will cost the county a dime, blah, blah, blah. This county commissioner, um, when the vote came up, he said, and he's the only conservative county commissioner we're supposedly conservative we have. He said, I usually uh, am in favor of pr private property rights, but under, this, under these circumstances, I'll have to vote for this. I thought, mm -hmm. well, and you, you know, left me speechless. You have to stand up and say, if you vote for this, there is absolutely no way you can be for mm -hmm. private property rights. You mm -hmm. must be telling us a lie. Well, I am right. today, but I'm not tomorrow. Right. right. You know, uh, too many people to, to me, to it all comes down to property rights. That is the basis yeah. of absolutely everything. And if you have a commissioner who doesn't understand that or doesn't stand on his principles, how in the world can you vote for it? Exactly right. Mm -hmm. you don't. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we need someone who's going to have to leave, about. and I noticed that Mark Meadows was here, and I wondered if he might have something that would contribute to this that we could hear. I would welcome it. Thank you. Well, uh, just answering a little bit, I think your, your deal on, on what's, what's happened. Uh, Dan has been very vocal in raising the awareness, and as we, we look at this, uh, obviously there are those that want to take it and truly demonize us all uh, and and I've, I've taken my hits and on the front page of the Asheville citizens this week uh, you know as, as we look at it but I think what's coming out of this are resolutions that are coming from County Commission I think you'll see it in Cherokee County that uh, I believe they'll go ahead and fund it but I also believe that you'll see a resolution that says that we are not going to allow international interference and in, in, uh, outside control for those private property rights and and uh, and I think we'll see that and that's really where we need to focus on is making sure that the county commissioners understand that and keep that control on a local level I mean that's something that most mountain people will embrace regardless of party they say well you know don't don't tell me what to do with my property uh, and so as we do that it's an inch at a time and, and I just uh, applaud you for uh, raising the issue and the awareness, and, and I'm seeing a, a difference. Uh, truly, even in, in our county here, uh, the county commissioners are, are, are looking at it, and uh, I believe you'll see resolutions that, that come, come down the pike. And uh, so, uh, you know, to see this many people out on a, on a beautiful Saturday inside here listening, <laughs> listening to a guy talk about freedom, uh, it, it gives me hope. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Showing up at the Cherokee County Commission meeting and supporting us. Yes. That was a pretty good crowd, Mark, That's wasn't great. it? It was, it was a very big crowd, standing room only. And they were pretty vocal, weren't they? Very vocal. And things got a little heated, didn't they? Yeah. Yes, yeah. they did. Well, thanks for having my back. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Dr. Dan, my name is Clark Holster. I was at the Dr. Dan's two presentations down in Cherokee County also. I have uh, handouts in my car outside from both of those um, presentations, plus the newspaper articles that were printed if you all like to have them. 
so that you can copy and hand back without what you're doing. Because I had been visiting all the marinas around, look how high velocity and doing the marina bosses, and they've been very receptive to them. And I've also been down to talk with the Kennedys down at uh, 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 Mandel Outdoor Center, where I've worked for six years. And uh, I love handouts down there. However, things have sort of changed down there. They put a lot of their uh, shares up for sale. And I thought when I was working there, they were selling to the employees. But I understand there's outside and limits now. So I'm going to try to talk to Kathy again this afternoon and find out what's going on down there and try to let her know what we're trying to accomplish. So if you'd like to have those handouts and so forth, I'd be very happy to bring them in here. You can copy them as uh, Dr. Michael Bob White did for me. That'd be great. Actually, I have a few of the handouts that we gave out at the commission meeting in which we go through. This is the handout that uh, goes through uh, and itemizes uh, places in the toolbox. Well, so, yeah. You have some of these, too? I brought a few. We don't have a bunch because we just sort of printed them ourselves, but I'll give them to you. Okay? Yeah, and from the first? Not from the first. This is the one from the second meeting. Yeah. I'll give you. 